The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Wednesday, July 19, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link to our Patreon in the description and comment section below. Despite entering Tuesday night's game at just 46-48, the Guardians are alive and well in the American League Central race. As of this writing, Cleveland is just 1.5 games back of Minnesota. The Guardians are 5-5 in their last 10, and they're 1-0 against the Pirates in their season series. Aaron Seville gets the nod in this matinee showdown, and he'll be making his 11th start of the year. The right-hander comes into this one a 3-2 with a 2.65 ERA and 1.08 whip. Most recently, he faced the Rangers and allowed just two earned runs on five hits and a walk over 5.0 innings of work. Seville took a no decision in the 12-4 loss. The offense has been an issue for the Guardians this season as they're just 27th overall in runs scored, 385. Those runs are courtesy of the 15th ranked team batting average, 0.251, and 25th best ops, 0.694. As for individual efforts, Josh Naylor leads the way in both average, 0 .310, and RBI, 69. Jose Ramirez has supplied the power with 14 home runs, and he also has the edge in OBP, 0.359. The Pirates' hot start to the season has quickly flamed out, and they're in a tailspin to the bottom of the division. As of this writing, Pittsburgh is tied with St. Louis at 41-53, and they're sharing last place in the NL Central. The Pirates are just 2-8 in their last 10 games. Rich Hill will try to turn things around as he gears up to make his 20th start of the year. The Southpaw enters this game at 7-9 and owns a 4.76 ERA and 1.44 whip. He just faced the Giants on Friday and posted a quality start, lasting 6.0 innings while limiting them to three earned runs on seven hits. Hill took a no decision in a 6-4 loss. Take the Cleveland Guardians on the money line with confidence. The Guardians are a much better team than the Pirates and they are trending in the right direction. The Guardians are 46-48, but they are in the playoff hunt. The Pirates, on the other hand, are floundering and are in last place in the division. The Guardians also have a good matchup against Rich Hill. The current Guardians roster is slashing 0.341.408.545 against Hill, which is a very good sample size. Hill is a veteran pitcher, but he is not as good as he used to be. I think the Guardians will be able to score enough runs to win this game. While I believe the Guardians will do enough offensively to win the game, I am still riding the under in this game. These are two of the worst offenses in baseball going at it on a getaway day. And, we all know how managers can roll out their B lineups for these matinee games. Statistically, Cleveland is 27th in runs scored, 385, and 25th in ops, 0.694, while Pittsburgh is 26th, 388, and 24th, 0.696, in those respective categories. On top of that, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fantastic form that Aaron Seville is currently in. In three starts this month, the right-hander owns a 1.50 ERA and 0.67 whip over 18.0 innings of work. He's on a tier right now. The under is the best bet in this spot. Los Angeles Dodgers vs Baltimore Orioles. With their win in the series opener, Los Angeles improved to 3-1 coming off of the break and were 8-2 over their last 10 games. In those first four games since the All-Star break, Dodgers pitching had surrendered only seven runs. The staff had allowed 425 runs through 93 games, 18th overall. They had struck out 794 batters over 826.2 innings and allowed only 271 free passes, fourth fewest in the game. Urias is looking for a third straight win after taming the Pirates and Mets by allowed a combined four hits, two walks and two runs. He also struck out 15 batters in 12 innings. Urias has two career appearances against the Orioles, but had a 10.38 ERA over 4.1 innings of work against them. Dodgers hitters have accounted for 18 runs in the four games after the break. They are hitting .244 as a team, 19th overall, but their .451 slugging percentage was fourth best. Los Angeles is second in the majors with 152 home runs, and their 512 runs through 93 games were fourth most. The Dodgers are one of just two teams that has two players with 100 or more hits. Mookie Betts just picked up his 100th hit of the season in Monday's game. The all-star outfielder has hit safely in seven straight games, with a .467 average, four home runs, eight RBIs and eight runs in that span. The O's have rattled off three straight coming out of the break, before the Dodgers put an end to that on Monday. Like Los Angeles, they have gone 8-2 over their last 10 games heading into Tuesday night. 
The offense has put up 22 runs in the four games they've played in the second half. They've scored 462 runs through 93 games, the seventh most overall and fourth most in the aisle. As a team Baltimore has slashed 0.254.324.426 this season. Three players on the club have at least 93 hits, with Adley Rutschman leading the club with 94. The second-year catcher has hits in five straight games and was hitting .320 in 13 games in July. Baltimore's pitching staff had allowed 4.3 runs per game over their four games in the second half, compared to the 4.4 they have allowed on average this season. Their 4.16 team ERA ranked 16th overall and was complemented by a 1.30 whip and .252 opponent batting average. Creamer has put together back-to-back -to -back wins, allowing just one earned run in each of those starts. He allowed a combined six hits and three walks in that stretch and struck out 18 batters over 13 innings. This will be Creamer's first time facing the Dodgers in his career. Take the Orioles on the money line. The Dodgers are not as good in day games as the Orioles and Baltimore has a better home record. Creamer has been pitching well lately and he has a good record against National League opponents. Urias has not been good on the road this season. These two teams did put up 10 runs in the series opener, but this matchup might be a little different given the strength of starts involved. Over his last 16 starts, Creamer has allowed 5 or less runs on 14 occasions and 3 or fewer, 12 times. He has proven difficult to score off of, even for a fine-tuned offense. Urias has been similarly successful, especially of late where he pitched 6 scoreless innings in his last outing, and the bulk of the 7 runs he has allowed in 3 starts since returning from the injured list were all in his first game back. We have two very strong offenses here, but with a day game after a night game, I like the more refreshed pitching to take over. Take the under. Tampa Bay Rays vs Texas Rangers. The Tampa Bay Rays have been extremely good at the plate throughout the season, as they are fourth in the sport with a .781 ops, while scoring 5.38 runs per game up to this point. First baseman Yandy Diaz, .918 ops, .322 BA, has been doing extremely well and has looked like one of the top hitters lately, as he has a .925 ops with one homer and seven RBI, with a 7-12 walk to strikeout ratio in his last 18 games. Cooper Criswell has been struggling this year as he is 1-1 with a 5.04 ERA and a 1.48 whip over 25 innings on the bump. Hitters are being able to get hits consistently off him as hitters have a .296 batting average against him. Chriswell is coming off a no decision against the Kansas City Royals, where he gave up two runs on five hits with zero walks and two strikeouts in four innings of work. So far this season, the Texas Rangers have been one of the most dominant teams at the plate, as they are second in the majors with a .803 ops, while scoring 5.83 runs per game in that span. Right fielder Atlas Garcia, .851 ops, 80 RBI, has been clicking on all cylinders, as he has a .282.364.590 slash line with 3 home runs, 11 RBI, 10 runs scored, and a 5-10 walk to strikeout ratio in his last 10 games played. The Texas Rangers are the better team in this matchup. The Rangers have a more experienced pitcher in Nathan Eovaldi, and their offense has been better than the Rays' offense in recent games. The Rangers are averaging 4.9 runs per game in their last 10 games, while the Rays are averaging 3.4 runs per game. The Rangers are also 31-18 at home this season, while the Rays are 25-22 on the road. I think the Rangers will win this game at home and wrap up the series. Looking at the last seven appearances for these pitchers, Cooper Criswell is 1-1 with a 5.04 ERA and a 1.48 whip in 25 innings, while John Gray is 1-4 with a 4.35 ERA and a 1.21 whip in 41.1 innings in that span. Both lineups have shown the ability to hit for an incredible amount of power this season, as Tampa Bay ranks fourth with 143 home runs as a team, while Texas is not far behind in sixth place in MLB, with 130 total homers. All in all, go with the over as it makes the most sense for this game.